So today's training is going to be on uh, how to make holiday chocolate truffles with Thanksgiving and Christmas right around the corner. We're fortunate again to have Chef Mary Jenko from the Art Institute of Tampa. He's going to show us um, how to make chocolate ganache and some decorations and some toppings that we can put on. So, yeah, all you. So, um, we're going to be making truffles. Truffles is made with ganache, which is an emulsion. An emulsion are two things that usually do not combine. With ganache, the, the items that usually don't combine are the chocolate, which has a lot of fat, then we have butter, and then we add heavy cream. So this is two pounds of dark chocolate to one pound of unsalted butter to a pint of heavy cream. Pint is two cups. The heavy cream already has come to a boil. We're gonna pour it directly over the butter and the chocolate. At this time, we're going to cover it with plastic wrap and we're going to let it sit for about 7 to 10 minutes. After we've let it sit for 7 to 10 minutes, we'll add some vanilla extract to it or some liqueur such as brandy, rum, uh, scotch, whatever your poison is, you can add to the mixture. We're letting this sit because it's going to melt. It's going to do the work itself versus me adding all the muscle to it. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but not much. Once that's happened, we've added our liqueur or vanilla extract. We're going to take our whisk and start in the center and mix everything together so that it's homogenous. Once that occurs, we're going to put it into a pan such as this, and we're going to refrigerate it overnight so that it, it's hard and solid. When we're ready to scoop our truffles, we'll take them out, take this out about 30 to 45 minutes before we're going to scoop them to soften the chocolate up and soften the ganache up a little bit. Once we're ready, you can take a scoop of this or you can take a melon baller and you're just going to go across the surface of the ganache in one direction. You're going to release it, you're going to roll it, and before we coat it in our final coating, I'm just going to put a little bit of a chocolate shell on the outside. This is melted white chocolate and all I'm going to do is give it a little bit of coating. It's going to be like a glue because once this happens I'm going to roll it into my sprinkles here, my chocolate jimmies. Coat it all up and voila! You have a chocolate chocolate. You don't have to use the jimmies. You can use Oreo cookies, you can use Charlotte mints, you can use nuts, you can use toasted coconut. The world is your oyster when it comes to your toppings as well as your flavor profile. Chef, does it matter what kind of chocolate that you use? Can you use milk chocolate or? Yes, you can use milk chocolate, you can use semi-sweet chocolate, you can use dark chocolate, you can use white chocolate. What you want to look at though is the percentage of chocolate that it ha the chocolate has. So if it says 53%, that means 53% of that product is pure chocolate. Once you know the percentage of chocolate, you then will adjust your ratio of your recipe accordingly. So you might need less butter, less cream, more butter, more cream, more flavoring, just depending on the type of chocolate that you're using. Now, can we freeze these up when we're all, when we're all done with these? It's a very good question because you can work ahead of time. If you were to give these as gifts from the holidays, you can go ahead and make them all the way to the end stage and then freeze them accordingly. However, you don't want to leave them there too long because the chocolate will change its state. You deal with something called fat blue and sugar blue when we have chocolate and one of the things that change its state um, after, before it's been made into a truffle will be uh, the temperature, it'll be condensation, humidity, the environment will change that chocolate. So if you look now, everything's kind of starting to melt a little bit, it's going to start coming together. I'm going to give it a little bit of a motion here to kind of help it out. And you can see it's just kind of doing it itself. I'm not really doing a lot here. Um, I'm going to take my whisk in a minute and get this going. I'm going to add some vanilla. About two ounces of vanilla, four ounces of an alcohol. And we're just going to start in the center. 
you can see it's already starting to take that beautiful ganache look. The butter helps to add the shine, that extra fat. And let's say this gets a little bit too cold, meaning not everything's coming together. No problem, just flash it over a double boiler until everything's melted and then you can just continue to stir. Yeah, I've heard the term when chocolate seizes. What, what does that mean? Well, when chocolate seizes, it could be a few things. We mentioned fat bloom and we mentioned sugar bloom. Um, temperature and ingredients are important when we're dealing with chocolate. So if a chocolate seizes, it's coming out of its natural state. And you can't really go back. Uh, so you have to start all over again. That's why watching the temperature, watching your environment, watching what you're adding to your chocolate mixture is really important. Water is one of the things that can cause chocolate to seize. So if water was added to this, the chocolate would start to separate. And that's not what we want. So, so this is really an emulsion. Yes. Just like when we do a uh, hollandaise or a mayonnaise. So once it's it's broken, it's it's broken. It's, it's broken. It's very difficult to repair. Correct. Okay. So you can see it's coming nicely together. I'm doing a little bit more than I wanted to do, but that's okay. It's just a little bit cooler than uh, usual, but no problem. Everything's combining nicely. And like I said, once this is fully, once you see those little pieces gone and it's nice and smooth, we just pour it right into a container such as this and let it sit for 24 hours. Thank you. Utensils to use when you're doing this would be a whisk, a nice heavy whisk, and a rubber spatula. A rubber spatula in the bake shop is a necessity. The more the merrier when it comes to that. So if I wanted to add a little bit of texture to my ganache, I could leave these a little bit whole. Not totally whole, but I could leave them a little, you know, give them a little bite. It's really not going to hurt it. And these are just dark chocolate chips. If you have a block of chocolate, you want to make sure that you are um, chopping that chocolate because you can't really use that big whole piece for what I'm doing here. It'd be really difficult. And then we just pour it into this container. It's really wonk up here. this in plastic wrap, label it into the cooler 24 hours, pull it out when we're ready to use it, and that's what we have.